fifth grade. So last week we talked about complete subjects and complete predicates, something that we had touched on a little bit last year, but I really wanted to get us back into so we can further break down sentences and structure. This week we're going to be looking at simple subjects and simple predicates. Again, something we touched on, but something I want to dig back into so we can build on it more uh, with lessons to come. So. The complete subject we know is the complete section of the sentence that focuses on who or what the sentence is about, and then the complete predicate focuses on what the subject does or is. So an example could be any one of these. My teacher, Mrs. L, sings a lot. The complete subject would be my teacher, Mrs. L, and the complete predicate would be sings a lot. Today we're going to be looking at the simple subject and the simple predicate. So what are they? Simple subject is the most important word of the complete subject. This is not subjective. This is not something that you decide. Also, I apologize. I can't find my eraser. This is not something that you are deciding. This is something that you are looking at and seeing what the main word is. So I don't mean most important, like which one you like the best, but which one is exactly who or what the sentence is about. Simple predicate is the most important word of the complete predicate. So that's exactly what the subject does or is. So you're trying to get down to kind of the itty gritty. If you had to cut out all the extra parts of the sentence, what are the two things that you would need to know who it's about and what they're doing? So let's practice with the first one. So I'm going to go through these here. This is not something that you have to write out, though if you would like to write them out and then practice along with me, it's something that could definitely help. What you're going to be doing after this is going on to do IXL GG3, which is the simple subject, simple predicate practice and gain 100% proficiency. All right, let's look at the first one. My teacher, Mrs. L, sings a lot. So I already told you what the complete subject would be. It would be my teacher, Mrs. L, and then the complete predicate would be sings a lot. But if I'm going down to the itty gritty, exactly who and exactly what are they doing Exactly who would be Mrs. L. And then exactly what they're doing would be sings. So simple subject, simple predicate. Now, if we were doing this ordinarily in class, we'd probably practice by first underlining the complete sub subject, double underlining the complete predicate, and then circle to acknowledge each the simple subject and simple predicate. For right now, I'm just going to circle and label each of the simple subject and simple predicate, just so we can see. That being said, one thing that sometimes helps is to make a dividing line so that in your mind you can kind of see each section. Your simple subject has to be part of the complete subject, and your simple predicate has to be part of the complete predicate. So if I drew my dividing line here, I would know that my simple subject needs to be from this side, and my simple predicate needs to be from this side. So let's try that with the second sentence. MJ cooks eggs each morning. Now, I know that this is about MJ, but I think that's the whole subject. So if this is the complete subject, you're gonna find that sometimes the complete subject and the simple subject overlap entirely. This is both the simple subject and the complete subject, because there is no other detail added onto that part of the sentence. If it had said, my husband MJ, then that would be the complete subject, and then MJ would be the simple subject. But as it is, the simple subject and complete is just MJ. So if I drew a dividing line, that would be here. That means my simple predicate needs to come from this part of the sentence. And what is the thing that he is doing? Exactly what he does or is, here it is a does, and what he does is cooks. So, just like with the Mr. Morton song that you guys watched last week, we are kind of breaking it down and you can even repeat just to kind of check to see that it works. So, Mr. Morton walked down the street, Mr. Morton walked, Mr. Morton talked to his cat, Mr. Morton talked. You're putting the subject and you're putting the simple predicate back together to kind of hear that, yes, this makes sense, this is the main who or what the sentence is about, and exactly what they do or are. So, my teacher Mrs. L sings a lot, Mrs. L sings, MJ cooks eggs each morning, MJ cooks. Let's look at the next one. My sweet baby bear Colby is sleeping on my feet. 
which is true. He's here right now. I know he interrupted that last video a little bit, but I also know you guys like him, so I let him stay in. My sweet baby bear Colby is sleeping on my feet. Now, I know who it's about, but if I'm dividing up the two parts of the sentence, so I've got my sweet baby bear Colby, that's the complete subject. If I'm boiling it down, though, the simple subject would just be Colby. And the simple predicate, and this is something that people sometimes get confused with, would be is. Now, your mind would probably go automatically to the word sleeping, because that's the action that you recognize him as doing. But this is exactly what the subject does or is. If I could say, Colby sleeps on my feet, there, that's the simple predicate, Colby sleeps. But Colby is sleeping, it's the state of sleeping, it's what he is doing. And because it's worded this way, is is the simple predicate, not sleeping. We'll practice that more. I know that one might seem a little confusing, but it's something to be careful of and to look out for. If I said, um, I mean, anything worth this. If I said someone is eating, is is the simple predicate, because it's the state of doing something, and then eating is what that thing that they're doing is. So it's all about how it's worded. Make sure that you are careful of that. Though, the same could be true if I said is in a different context. If I said, Mrs. Lombard is my teacher, well, there it's a little more obvious because there isn't another verb there to confuse you. The state of being a teacher is the action. Let's go on to the next one, a little easier. I miss being at St. Mary's. To be clear, we're still St. Mary's right now. I just miss being at the school. I like our classroom a lot. Oops, sorry, I think I moved it. There we go. I miss being at St. Mary's. So, right now is another example of when the complete subject and complete predicate will overlap. If I divide up the sentence, this is the complete subject, this is the complete predicate. So, simple subject is easy, just I. Simple predicate would be miss. I miss being at St. Mary's, I miss. My sweet baby bear Colby is sleeping, Colby is. Right, and let's look at the last one. Sometimes our class has Zoom calls together. Now, I threw a qualifier in the front, which is the word sometimes, which is just giving you a time when an action is happening. It is not itself, itself is not, this is not the subject, this is not a predicate. It'll be part of the timing of the other stuff that happens, so it influences the sentence, but it would not be considered a simple subject or a simple predicate. But let's look at it. Sometimes our class has Zoom calls together. Well, the subject I'm gonna say is our class. So we can divide up the sentence, putting a line there. So I'd say the word I could zoom in on for simple subject would be class. And then, like earlier, you might be tempted to say, oh, our class calls, because calls is a verb. But in this case, calls is a noun. It's a Zoom call that we have, action word being have. So class has. Okay. So breaking it down a little bit further, or sorry, we've broken it down a little bit further. Let's look over it one more time. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Simple subject is the most important word of the complete subject, which is exactly who or what. We have all this extra description here. My sweet baby bear, Colby. Exactly who? Colby. Without all the extra description. Last week, I think I said my neighbor, Bill. Bill. So if I said my neighbor, Bill, mows his lawn. Bill mows. Or um, going back to Mr. Morton. Um, Mr. Morton wrote Pearl a poem. Mr. Morton wrote. Um, Pearl replied in the afternoon, Pearl replied. So sometimes there's more added on to the subject side, sometimes there's more added on to the predicate side, but the simple subject and simple predicate will stay the same in that sentence. We need to be able to identify which one each is. So, oh, not what I want. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly who or what, and exactly what the subject does or is. 
you're just zooming in on each. When you are in IXL, you're going to be given sentences where you're identifying which word falls into those categories. So if I said to you, look at this sentence, what is the simple subject? Make sure first you're thinking, okay, who or what is it about? And then out of that section of complete subject, all the who or what, my sweet baby bear Colby, you could, your brain might first be like, is it bear? But then you'll see, okay, the name, if I was going to just describe it really quickly to you, Colby is, <laughs> which doesn't come off as a real sentence, obviously, but that's because you need more detail about what he is doing. It's just the state of doing something. MJ Cooks makes a lot more sense on its own. So you're looking for simple subject, which is exactly who it's about or what it's about. I didn't, well, I guess I, I threw a what in here at the end with class. <laughs> and then simple predicate, exactly what the subject does or is. Class has, I miss, Colby is, MJ Cooks, Miss L sings. You're zooming in on those particulars. If you guys need any help with this, I am happy to offer you more practice or talk you through it a little further if you need. Uh, you can email me and we can schedule a time where I can call or video you to help out. Otherwise, work through the IXL. It should be really good practice. It also helps if you get one wrong, click down to see why it's wrong. It'll give you a sense of maybe where you're making the errors. If you realize they're more on the predicate side, okay, then that's what you're going to be practicing and thinking about more. Exactly what the subject does or is, looking for the most important word, thinking about the verb in the sentence. And that'll give you kind of a good idea of what you need to work on moving forward. If you realize it's more on the subject side, well then focusing on who is it really about or what is it really about as you look at each sentence. So I will uh, get to see your practice and see how you guys do. Once again, reach out to me if you need help and we will be moving forward a little bit next week as we dig into um, subjects and uh, predicates in different types of sentences, which is where we get more into the fifth grade work. Um, this is a lot of our review and practice building up a little bit more for our grammar. So I love you guys and I will talk to you later. Bye!